Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to look at just two verses. And let me just say thank you to the diaconate and the staff and Reverend William Lee and Reverend Ertha and all Lady Maxwell and all the family here that, that's been watching over our church as I've been traveling. We are grateful to you all. Uh, and thank you for taking care of our beloved brother Mike Warren and Crystal and their family and laying the rest, you know, his sister. And so a pastor heart is made glad when you see his people take care of one another. And so we're so glad that you surrounded Mike with love and continue to lift him up and pray with him and for him. Amen. And thank you for your receptivity to my son and his preaching and teaching and sharing. I don't think he left much for me to do. You know, he said we were sharing this series. He, he named the series, but he ain't shared nothing. He broke everything up. Amen. Uh, as I was preparing to go to Angola, somebody I didn't know told me I was, uh, that I was leaving town and knew how many days I was leaving. I had not even announced it to the church, and it had made me nervous. Yeah, I have a, you know, security background in the black, it's called. And so when somebody knows I'm going to a country and knowing how many days and I don't know them, it's uncomfortable. And so one of my responses was not only to bring my son to feed you, but also to protect my household and my family. Amen. And so I'm just so grateful that you all received him and took care of him. And he did the work uh, that he needed to do. And Facebook Live, he was slamming up on there. My God. I'm so grateful for all that. So thank you all. Uh, just your love and all the things that you have done. I'm a little bit jealous, I got to admit it, uh, because he's been the wild preacher with a woman of worship preacher. He, he's, I haven't had a chance to preach around wild, and I'm jealous. He's claiming that his, that's his choir. I rebuke that. I, re, I rebuke that. So I haven't seen the wild yet, but I heard it over the tape. And the last week's tape sound like a revival. Lord Jesus, my God. Well, we need to have wow and the, the same energy of wow every Sunday. Somebody say amen. amen. Every Sunday, amen. And so I want to look at this text that Maurice was dealing with and deal with it a little way. So that's on Galatians chapter 5. I want to look at just two verses, just two verses. That's verse 24 and 25. I want to read in your hearing out of the King James Version. If you are there, say amen. amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24 and 25. My Bible reads thusly, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to tag this text as publicized. It's time for a blood test. It's time for a blood test. Just turn to your neighbor on the right and left. Just look him in the face and say, did you get your DNA tested? Turn to your other neighbor and say, it's all about the ancestors. Amen. It's time. For a blood test. Pray with me and stay with me. After having been kidnapped from their villages in what is present day Angola, forced onto a Portuguese slave ship bound for what Europeans call the New World, and then stolen from that ship by English pirates, some say Dutch, in a confrontation off the coast of Mexico. Some 20 and some say 20 or more landed in Point, Point Comfort uh, in 1619 in the English settlement that would one day become Virginia. Do I have a witness? The 400th anniversary of the Africans' arrival in what is now the USA is being observed this year, as you may know. The Association for the Study of African American Life and History and the Custodian of Black History Month is taking the lead in paying tribute to perseverance and resilience. Even Congress established the 400 Years of African American History Commission. And while some declare that 1619 marked the beginning of slavery in England's American colonies, 
they are off the mark in at least two ways. First, Africans have been imported as slave labor in the English colony of Bermuda, Bermuda before 1619. Amen. And second, the status of those 20 odd more Negroes, they call them, from the white line is still a matter of contention. In addition, we know that the transatlantic slave trade went from 1501 to 1875 and beyond. And we know that slaves were taken to South America like Brazil and Caribbeans. And so the 1619 story, and we are in 2019, 400 years later, amen. But that 1619 story is only important for the people who develop within the nation state that has become the United States. Uh, noted scholar and professor of history at Howard University, Daryl Scott, uh, who's also the past president of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, he said, it's about how you define the history that you're telling. Because there's a lot of people that have a different story about our history and how history is being told. Do I have a witness? And he points out that if one were to consider the migration of Africans from about the 15th century, one could also mark arrivals in Spain and Portugal and Italy, as well as the Arab world. But it was interesting traveling to Africa and to hear a slave trade from the African perspective, from Angola's perspective. And so for Angola perspective, uh, they say they lost 30 to 35 million 16 to 30 year olds in the transatlantic slave trade and other slave trades distributing Angolans not only to America and South America to Car and the Caribbeans, but far places as China and places in Europe and around the world. Did you hear the number I said? They, 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 they said 30 to 35 million. Uh, when we encountered them, they crossed their sh arms like Wakanda and they were beating their chests saying that we mourn every day for our sons and our daughters. And when those two mothers put their forehead on my head and grabbed my face and kissed my cheeks and said, you've been missing for 400 years, as I wept and could not stop from weeping, I felt my ancestors talking to me. Can you feel how I'm feeling right now? And so they, they were saying something, said 30 to 35 million, many of which uh, whose blood and uh, voices are still crying out in the Atlantic. Amen. And so as they shared the story from their perspective, they said, you know, we, many of you don't realize that most of these Angolans were taken up to Senegal and Ghana and to, to other slave distribution centers and so they were considered Ghanese and said, no, 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 they, they were Angolans who were taking up so many different places uh, and distributed out. There were some others there beyond Angolans, but they wanted us to understand that there's much more to the story. Uh, and then one mother talked about her grandmother's story where she said, uh, I, we know about the persecution and the beatings and the lynching. She said, but most people don't understand lynching and tree hanging was quite uh, uh, consistent in Africa as well by those who colonized Africa, uh, French and particularly the Portuguese in Angola. He said they were wicked. They cut one hand off and stacked the hands and made walls out of the hands of men and women and imprisoned them in those walls to remember who was in power. And tears rolled down the delegation's eyes as they talked about the type of crucifixion they went through. Are y'all hearing me today? And so in our meeting with the Angola's Minister of Culture, she stated that they were working with American ancestry DNA companies themselves. I said, well, we're doing that too. Everybody's into DNA. Some of us don't want to give it up, though, because we don't trust America. Do I have anybody up in here that believe that? And so we're not sure about it. And she said, well, we have a company that's been working for the last 10 years collecting saliva and banking blood uh, because they are hoping their sons and daughters around the world would try to connect back to them. Lord Jesus. Uh, and so the only way, she said, we can connect to our sons and daughters through tears, she said, is through the blood. Oh, I'm trying to tell you it's time to take a blood test. It said through the blood. 
And really, that's what Paul is doing in Galatians as he deals with false prophets and false teachers who are spreading a syrupy, sweet, dysfunctional gospel. Lord, how mercy. Uh, they're taking the liberty in Christ and they threaten the liberty through Christ through legalism. Uh, and they were using the liberty for an occasion of the flesh. And, and Paul is challenging them because Paul knows that there is a clear purpose and persona of kingdom people. And we should be a mock people, Lord Jesus, that stand out in the world. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I have enough saints here this morning that understand that you are to stand out in the world. Although you're in the world, should not be of the world. You ought to stand out in the world. Uh, we should be, like Matthew declares, the salt of the earth and a light not hidden under a bushel. Uh, we should be clear about being set apart people, saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. We should know that we are the redeemed of the Lord. And so Paul is working the text in Galatians because he believes that the people of God, the redeemed of the Lord, who've been brought with a price, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, ought to know who they are. Oh, y'all going to help me today. Y'all quiet, all right? God's choice possession. We're, we're God's special possession. We, we, we ought to have his DNA. Uh, we, we ought to have his bloodline. And, and what connects us is that we are birthed not of this world uh, in our um, earthly birth, but we are birthed of the kingdom of God. We are kingdom citizens. Uh, do I have any kingdom citizens that came out this morning? Uh, we are kingdom citizens. with a, uh, And we all should be moving it toward the personality and the persona, Lord Jesus, and the mind and the spirit of the king. Uh, there should be movement. We can't stay the same. We can't do the same things we used to do. We should be moving. Our personality should be under a crucifixion process as we are being discipled. And, uh, and we have to be changed and transformed and renewed. And so people should know uh, who our daddy is. People should know uh, who our heavenly parent is. People should know who we belong to. People should know that there's a bloodline that's connected to us. And, and I come by back from Africa to ask you maybe it's time we take a blood test maybe it's time we take a blood test we, 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 we don't miss it don't miss it we are the sons and the daughters uh, that can be identified by the blood of the king uh, and the persona of love we got a lot of personality and attributes and characteristics, but if we don't have love, if we don't have the personhood and the persona of love, we are not really attached to the king that we're talking about. Uh, help me to preach, Holy Ghost. The sons and daughters can be identified by the blood of the king and the persona of love that dominates the character of kingdom kids. Oh, 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 oh God, God. I, uh, I, I was down uh, uh, in their sanctuary. Uh, this is the Tokish church, and it holds 37 to 39,000 people, which was wild just to understand, just walking through the sanctuary. It's almost four city blocks long. So process that and also has a top uh, boundaries and so forth. So we have in worship service. Uh, uh, and so a man walks up from the front and walks up to me and says in Portuguese, and my translator tells me, he says, um, you look just like my uncle. And so he took out the picture and he put it in my face and he said, look, you got the long head, the kinky eyes, the Chinese face, the cheeks and everything. And I looked at that picture and he looked just like my uncle, my, my uncle Thomas. I'm like, uncle Thomas might have been getting around. <laughs> but he didn't wait for service to over. He's, he said, there are attributes and I see on the outside that makes me feel we are connected oh God on the inside and there's something I see in you that makes me feel that you are in my bloodline and I'm trying to tell you, you, you ought to have something on the outside that reflects that something's happening on the inside of you. There, there ought to be some light on the outside, some 
attribute, some personality, some form and shape that looks like the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So help me, Maurice. I, I, my son has been preaching in my ears all day. Uh, it's customary now when you got to understand that Paul is doing something diligently because he, uh, Paul understands that they are fighting against uh, false apostles and false prophets and false teachers. Somebody say fake people. Don't you know there's fake people all over the place? There's fake people all up in church. There's fake people in your neighborhood. They may be living with some fake people. Uh, but, but Paul recognizes there's a lot of fake people out there. So Paul is laying out the doctrinal foundation first uh, in the Galatians text. He's making sure that doctrine is the foundation, the teaching of the church, the clear precepts and principles of the Christ, the King, is the foundation. Uh, not, not things we do and people and personality, but doctrine, sound doctrine. So he's building uh, on sound doctrine, the gold and the silver and the gems. And he said, uh, once you got your doctrine straight, your deeds will come behind it. Uh, once you once you know who you are and you have faith, then good deeds will follow. Uh, 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 and so there's no other foundation but Jesus Christ. Uh, and so we got to understand that we are saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. And the foundation of our faith is Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. He's everything we need. And without him, we are nothing. Somebody say amen right there uh, because he is the foundation. Uh, and upon that foundation, Jesus, the apostle, erects the structure of good works, which defines in this one sentence, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -mm, that love thing, I tell you, you can't get away from it. That love thing uh, is so important. That's why when you get into uh, the rest of the part of the book and you go up and look at the works of the flesh, you see what I call the manifestation of the false love things. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, and lasciviousness. Uh, the works of the flesh starts off with things that are about our sexuality, that we plug into the sexuality issues uh, because we have a false love and the enemy manipulates our sexuality uh, to give us the appearance of what love really looks like come on y'all gonna talk back to me in a minute don't act like you're so holy y'all don't know there's a lot of uncleanliness in the house. There's a lot of pornography and looking at all kinds of things because he knows that our sexuality is where we seek to connect with people, Lord Jesus, and try to get acceptance and affirmation from. So he deals with it up front and he talks about the works of the flesh that are manifest in adultery and fornication and uncleanliness and lasciviousness. He hasn't got to idolatry and witchcraft, but he shapes it around this love thing. Because a lot of us convolute and pollute that love thing. And I just want to admit to you, that love thing ain't easy. Anybody want to testify? That love thing ain't easy. That's a hard thing. Marriage ain't easy. Walking single in the earth ain't easy. Uh, trying to put your body under subjection ain't easy. You need Holy Ghost power to submit yourself to be able to deal with this flesh. Help me, Holy Ghost. You, you need some help up in here. Uh, and the more, listen, that you try to do it by, out of your own power, the more trouble you get in. Oh, help me. If, when you begin to try to do it of your own strength, when you try to handle your love thing by yourself, that's when you're going to get in trouble. You marry the wrong person, you sleep with the devil, and you walk with, with a fatal attraction. Help me preach this thing. Oh, Paul, you're talking here. You, he said, you got to understand there's a lot of false apostles, but there's a lot of false love experiences. And then you find out that you've been sleeping with the enemy. Come on. Woo, sleeping with the enemy. Help me, Jesus. And so we need Holy Ghost power to be able to account for. So love thy neighbor. So in, in adding such precepts of love, the apostle embarrasses these false apostles very much. As if he was saying to the Galatians, I have described to you what the spiritual life is. Now I will also teach you what truly good works are. Mm -hmm. Here's the spiritual life as the, in the beginning of the book, talking about uh, what the liberty that threatens leg, uh, legalism. Then he moves into what liberty really is in Christ, that being free in Christ doesn't get me free to do any damnable thing I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to be free in Christ means I'm accountable to my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm accountable to the Holy Ghost who works on the inside and try to get me to do right on the outside. 
Uh, okay, okay, keep going, Pastor Mike. I'm, I'm doing this in order that you may understand that silly ceremonies of the, uh, of the false teachers and false prophets always put in silly ceremonies. Uh, they, 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 they are inferior cer ceremonies to the works of Christian love. Uh, these, this is the landmark or the hallmark of all false teachers that they not only pervert the pure doctrine, but also fail in doing good. Uh, so you see, that's how you expose uh, false teachers and false prophets. Not only that their prophecy falls to the ground, uh, but, but they got a lot of rules, but no love. Uh, they, they enforce a lot of traditions, but no love. Uh, they, they, they got a, a lot of acts that they want you to do and hoops they want you to jump for, but they ain't really concerned about people. They, they're not really concerned about love, and, and so their foundation is vitiated. They, they only build on wood and hay and stubble, Lord Jesus. Uh, oddly enough, the false apostles who were such earnest champions of good works never required the work of love or charity as Christian love or practical charity uh, with the tongue, with the hand, and with the heart. Can I say that again? With the tongue, how you speak to people. If you're going to take on a persona of Christ, uh, which is the kingdom persona, you got to deal with the way you talk. That, that, that fiery member in your mouth that James talks about that wants to say anything, wants to curse people out. Don't you realize you got to stop cursing people, speaking death over the people, speaking lies. You never talk to them, but you're talking about them. Uh, you, you never had a conversation with them. You don't even know them, but you're speaking death out of your mouth to other people about them. Oh, come on. Y'all don't act like y'all don't know what gossip is and backbiting is. All that, all that tongue talking. You, you want tongue talking the holy ghost talking speaking in tongues but we speaking in unknown tongues all around up in church today we we speaking against one another we're speaking against the body of christ and that's exactly what the angolians were talking about and we were in this debate is that how we let the oppressor tell us who we are and tell us how we think about each other she said there's more suspicion that we have between African and African Americans. Uh, we listen to the oppression. I can't go to Africa. All they doing is swinging on trees. And I'm scared. And, and Africans don't like African Americans. They tell you, they say, got to our faces, that that's a lie from the pit of hell. She said, nothing, they, we never said that. Uh, we never said that. They said, one of the things that y'all gotta realize is you, you, you think that African says you're not pure. He said, my name is Nunez. My name is Rodriguez. We all up here in Angola got uh, Spanish names from Portugal. We mix too. He said, we're trying to find home too. We got French names and uh, English names and Portugal names and names that don't uh, go back to our history. Don't think, no, we want to learn from you. We want to learn from your black church, how your black church raised up your people in spite of the oppressor, in spite of the craziness, in spite of the challenges. That He said, we learned something. We watched Martin King. We watched what the black church was doing. But what's going on in the church today, they asked. They said, where's the church today? We know T.D. Jakes. That's what we, they said, we know T.D. Jakes, but what's going on in the church? Where's the revolution going on? Where, where, where's the church at in the, in the fight against the oppressor? Why the church so quiet? So we, we want to get the paradigm, the paradigmatic uh, actions of the black church. But we, need, we brought you here so y'all can teach us how y'all did it. Oh, God, I'm trying to tell you something there. I'm trying to tell you this, that there's a work to be done. There's a practical charity. We got to learn how to speak it out loud. Uh, do I got anybody here that know how to speak it out loud? We got we our hands and serve and our heart. Our condition of our heart is so critical. And so the only requirement that the, the false teachers was talking about was circumcisions. And they were concerned about days and months and years and, and, and days to observe. Mm -hmm. Uh, they could not think of any real good works. They had rules, but no love. They had traditions, but no love. They go to church, but are not the church. And so the apostle exhorts all Christians, listen now, to practice good works after they embraced pure doctrine of faith, because even though they would have been justified, they still had the old flesh 
Come on, test this. Touch that flesh, that old flesh to refrain from doing good. That, that, that's it right there. That, the, the, the enemy wants to constantly inflame your flesh, the old man in you, so you won't really do good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Therefore, it becomes necessary for preachers like myself to cultivate the doctrine of good works as diligently as we do the doctrine of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, because the enemy attacks both the good works and the faith. That's what Paul's dealing with. That, that there are works tied to the faith you have. If you believe Christ, you ought to be serving Christ. Right, right. You can't serve your own agenda. Your to-do list is not more important than God's agenda and God's mandate. So you got to look at your to-do list and ask that, is God breathing on it? Is God directing this? Is God involved in this? Or is this your to-do list? And I'll squeeze God in, maybe. Uh, no, 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 that, that, that's not the purposes or the persona of the kingdom. Well, uh, we, we become a God, uh, the priority of God becomes our priority. And Satan, the deadly enemy of both faith and good works. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't let nobody think that he knows all about uh, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. It's a simple commandment. And he deals with it all, all through chapter 5 and verse 6. And he goes down and talks about this love thing, the working of love, the uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And, and we know that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It sounds so simple and short and easy. But show me the man or the woman who can teach, learn, and do this commandment perfectly. None of us heed or urge or practice this commandment properly. Mm -hmm. Though the conscience hurts when we fail to fulfill the commandment in every respect, we are not overwhelmed by our failure, though. Uh, when we hurt our brothers and sisters, we fail to go back to them to even try to reconcile them. We jack people up and keep on moving. We say things about them and don't have nothing to say ever to reconcile it, to try to put it in order, to repent, to clean it up. I spoke uh, uh, prematurely. I spoke out of a turn. Forgive me. Ask for forgiveness. See, because we don't really uh, want to love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we got to change. And, and so we're going to have the persona of Christ. We got to come correct with God and make sure that we begin to get things back together. If you can't get it on this level and I can't get it straight on this level, we ain't going to have it straight on that level. You want to be elevated, but you don't want to be dedicated to be able to handle one another on this uh, level here. And so he's trying to help us. And so the words uh, that's before that text for all the law is fulfilled in this one word, the love thy neighbor as yourself, right? Uh, he says it entails a criticism of the Galatians. When Paul is lifting up the love ethic in the text, uh, he said you are t it forces them to look at what they're really not doing and what they are doing. That they're dealing with superstition. Mm -hmm. They're more concerned about their horoscope than they are concerned about the word of God. Uh, they, they, they going to see soothsayers and witches and, and putting hex on people and trying to curse people. Uh, and so he's letting them know they got ceremonies that serve no good purpose. You neglect the most important thing. Uh, the old theologian St. Jerome says we, are, we wear our bodies out with watching, fasting, and labor, and we neglect love. So you can fast and pray all you want, but if you don't have no love ethic, if you don't practice a love and loving like Jesus Christ love, you don't got the persona or the purpose of God. You can fast, pray, speak in tongues, bat flip, and do a twist, but until you love, the greater work is loving like Christ love. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And that's why the influence of the church is waning. Can I say the truth? The influence is waning. Is mitigating, is diminishing the influence because we, the body of Christ, are supposed to influence the world. We're supposed to influence the world. But let, let me tell you something I learned. Don't go by your context to, the, to, to define with the strength of your gifts. Mm -hmm. Don't go by your context where you're doing ministry every day to define what's really in you. Because mm -hmm. uh, when God was on the plane going there, God said to you, he spoke to me clearly. He said, uh, yeah, you've been trying to grow your church. But now I'm going to show you that I've been working on growing you so you can grow my church. I had no idea. 
what he understood. But he knew he was putting me in a context that I had no knowledge of. I had no language of. And so I had only but to lean on the Holy Ghost to listen to the sound of his voice as he guided me to every meeting, to every situation, to every circumstances. Because I had no idea when we got off the plane we were going to encounter uh, all these people who were hungry for their sons and daughters who wanted a word from America about the destiny of their, oh God, of their future because there's a prophecy in the land of Angola and it's also in Senegal and it's also in Liberia that the sons and daughters of slavery are going to return one day and they are going to help raise up the African continent. That prophecy, they said when we arrived it was fulfilled on that day. That is the most scariest thing in my life. I was doing the moonwalk. What? I was like, what? And But the spirit said, no, stand fast. Go everywhere I say. Speak what I say, speak. Say it when I say, say it. He nudged me in meetings to say things I would never have said. And when I spoke it up, you could see it break in the spirit realm. Uh, people were changing their mind, changing what they're going to do, changing uh, the direction of specific areas of the ministry of the government in Angola. They allowed me to sit with every cabinet member along with our 12 or 11 other members to be able to talk and share so much in the exchange. And let me tell you, that's nothing but the Holy Ghost. Oh, y'all y'all gonna get it in a minute. Let, let me say it again. If you only go by the context you do ministry in and you listen to what people say about you, you will never know who you really are. Come on, come on. I'm trying to tell you, Darlene, there's so much in you, woman of God, uh, but you got to get out of your normality and you got to get out of your familiar and you got to get out of the things that you're used to doing and let God put you somewhere else where you got to rely only on the power of the Holy Ghost uh, to talk to you, to move to you. Uh, uh, let me tell you, I, I got gifts that I never had on the spot in Angola. God gave me new gifts. Oh, Lord Jesus, where I, I would be able to read uh, the Portuguese. I never knew Portuguese, but I couldn't hear it in the language. But when you put it in front of me to read it, I started reading it. God was giving me things that I never had. And I'm trying to tell you, God wants to take all of us to another level. But we got to get out of our familiar routines, doing the same thing and doing church as usual. There's a big world and a big God that got big dreams and big hopes. But you got to take on the persona of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oof. Oof. I, 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 I realize I can't even preach all this right now. I got to let you go, don't I? I got to let you go. I, I got to let you go. I'm trying to tell you something. Mm. I'm trying to tell you something. You see, the church, we, we become politicians in the church. We become haters of categories of people. Uh, we, 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 we become self-righteous and Pharisaic in nature with a whole lot of outward works, but no consistent love ethic. That causes us to serve. We, we are too busy with our own to-do list and worried or be concerned about everybody's agenda but the king's agenda. See, the children of the kings, the sons and daughters of God, and Paul is telling us that. He's trying to convince them that they, they, they got to understand their DNA. You have been born of a woman uh, and shaping in iniquity, but then you had a second birth that happened. Uh, and, and, and our uh, articles of faith lets us know we've been twice born and blood washed. Uh, and now I don't just have um, uh, Dolores Maxwell and Clarence Maxwell DNA, but I got a new bloodline that's given to me. Uh, I got the King of Kings bloodline uh, in my chromosomes. Lord help me. And it helps me uh, that I have to speak up for my people. Parent. Oh, no. See, if you and all of y'all, y'all remember growing up, you're probably the same way now. You just couldn't say anything about my mama. That was fighting words. There was not, there, it, it was like, it, it was like so fast. As soon as you, you didn't even got mama off your mouth, you were, you were on top of somebody. 
You don't say nothing about my mama. And that's what Paul is trying to say to these false apostles. You can't talk about my heavenly father that way. You just can't say anything about my heavenly parent that way. I'm going to speak up. When I, when I see you out of order and talking down my Jesus, I'm going to speak up. Uh, I'm going to talk about the son of God, the king of kings. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to speak up through the power of the Holy Ghost. You just can't say anything so, uh, and cause me to be silent. Uh, I'm blood washed and saved and sanctified and the Holy Ghost feels so that demands that I open my mouth and say something about the God I serve, about my heavenly family. The enemy wants me to remain silent. The enemy wants me to be locked jawed. He wants us to have nothing to say, but I believe I cannot keep my mouth shut. We have to be been through too much to shut my mouth. I've been attacked too many times, crucified for doing little, marginalized too long, and it's never too late to say something. And because the DNA of the king is in my mouth I got to confront the false teachers I, I got to confront the false pastors and false prophets you got to say something for the king do I have anybody here that's going to use their vocal cords for the king uh, not just praise them sometimes you got to speak up and say something on behalf of the king you got to open your mouth because there's some DNA in you that demands that you respond to false doctrine the false teachers the false prophets and we are in a time where they are raising up all kind of false people that are speaking on behalf of Jesus but they are not those who are twice born and blood washed they're not holy ghost filled many of them got the demoniac on them and they're manipulators and we better open up our mouth because there's a hungry world waiting for us to open up our mouth there's a hungry world waiting for all the songs you can see there are 1.3 billion africans waiting for the black church in america to become who she really is and begin to rise up and speak a word to lay hands on people and see healing in the service lord jesus Jesus, to see the miracles of God to work from the outside and the inside to move to the second third dimension with power and anointing and be not afraid of what people say about you but stand flat footed and speak the word in season and out of season preach the word in season and out oh God we should influence the earth and bend the earth toward the king of kings. Because our disposition and personality and character is so Christ-like, it draws, it bends the earth toward the king of kings. And so you, when you go to most countries, I traveled Europe and other places, but I never, this is the first time I put my feet on African soil. And I can tell you, I wept when I got there. I wept, I wept. Uh, but, but I recognize that the construct of government always includes the seven mountains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, you go. You're gonna see the Secretary of Health, Human Services, your Secretary of Education. All right, you you got secretaries of every the military, DoD. Uh, the, the mountains are always included in the government. Mm -hmm. And so most countries, governments are broken into the seven mountains and more of culture. Mm -hmm. So you see the education, the religion, the family, the business, the government, the arts, and the media. But we should influence all of these seven mountains. The reason why we can't is because we stuck mm -hmm, between our old nature and what people think about us. Mm -hmm. We're more concerned about what people think Christianity looks like. Do they think I'm saved? We, we, we're stuck between the old nature and taking on the nature and persona of Christ. Our conversion process never was transferred to a discipleship process. Yes, you got born again and you got saved, but lordship has never fully been completed in you because you have not been discipled. And at some point, all of us have to own our discipleship process. Just like I disciple my children, and I, even though they 27, 28, 34, I'm constantly discipling them. And now that they're adults, they are helping me with my own discipleship. And so we always have to be in a modality of spiritual discipleship and growth. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me, the Holy Ghost. And so I don't want to be stuck only at the conversion level, but I want to see the transformation through the discipleship level. So we accepted Jesus in name, but not in spirit. Mm -hmm. We accepted Jesus in principle, but not in practice. 
We accepted Jesus in religion, but not in relationship. We accepted Jesus, got converted, baptized, but not transformed through discipleship. Oh, Lord God. And too many of us, I'm talking only in the church that I serve in. I know it because I'm your pastor. Too many of us are stuck. We're not taking ownership of our discipleship. I can confess that I have failed you in some areas. I, I can take on some of that as your pastor. I have failed you in some areas. I could have done so much better. Can I say honestly, uh, can you handle this conversation? I could have done so much better. And so I'm learning and growing too. And I tell you, we got to make sure that all of our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters, our elders are fully discipled in Jesus Christ. They must be transformed by the renewing of their mind. If you find the old you dominating everything in your life, you ain't been transformed. If you still got the old habits and you in love with those habits, you have not been changed. If you keep doing the same hellish things and you don't have no conscience about them, you have not had have the lordship of Jesus. You might be saved, but you ain't sanctified and may not be Holy Ghost filled. But I'm glad I'm not responsible to measure that. But I sure enough are responsible to make sure there's a process of discipleship so you can grow. Say, come on, let me grow, God. Help me to grow. Come on, say, help me to grow, God. Help me to grow. Help me to grow. And so we, 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 we have become more like earthly parents than our heavenly parents. Can I tell you a little bit about the Tokish church? I, I, I had some problems you know, doctrine is important. So I'm looking at some of their doctrine and so forth. So I asked them, why are y'all wearing white suits all the time, every day? White suits every day. I said, I bought one white outfit and, and it had a little black and gold in it. They don't want to have no black in it. And, it. and so I said, well, it sounds like y'all have Manichaeism, that white is pure and black is dark and demonic. How do you do that when you're so dark? And they said, they said no. We, we believe that we have to have a daily reminder of our cleaning process. So when we wear white, it reminds us that we're still at work. He said, you know how easy it is for white to get dirty? He said, so we wear white to work. We wear white where we go. The women got white scarves and white on. They got a little green they let in there. They don't let no red inside their church. I said, why? He said, because the blood of the oppressors, the oppressors spilled so much blood that we don't, have to have, we don't want too much or any red in our congregation. I said, That's, I still have some problems with some of your theology. And we're talking with the bishop. But, but then he kept saying, he said, the church will never be holy until you create a standard of holiness. He said, and, and, and the church that we're looking to, the black church, has lost so much that we used to have. And we are asking and we are begging y'all to bring the best of your church. But it got to have holiness with it. Woo, Jesus. Talk about being convicted and slapped in your face. I, I took my slap like a man. I don't know. Psh, I'm hitting y'all too. Are y'all I'm hitting y'all too. Are y'all taking it the right way? It's because we are called to live in the power and the purpose of the king and live the life that Christ died for. I heard Marie said something similar to that, but I don't know he unpacked that. That, that you, when you don't live the life that Christ died for, you are driving nails back in his hand. When, when you are sneaking around and creeping around and playing around and sleeping around, you, you're saying that his blood is not sufficient to redeem you. When, when you play around and don't really see that he died for you and his blood is worth you changing your behavior. Oh, y'all don't want me to talk. Uh, but that, that, that's why they, he went the works of the flesh. That sexual sin, that sin, con who I'm sleeping with can determine who I'm going to live with for eternity. Oh, let me say it again. I'm going to say it slow. Who I choose to sleep with can determine who I live with for eternity. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'll let it pass. Do you think they got that? Uh, and so all that's there, uncleanliness, sexual, God, uh, attraction, don't, even though you have attraction, let me tell you, I, I'm a brother. Kum fire kum. Woo! I'm a Black Panther brother. And I, and I ain't blind, Negroes. I'm not blind. I had never seen in my godly life the most beautiful black woman here and the one I'm married to, but there's so many black women over there. And let me just say to all the single women, there are more black men up over there than you ever can find. Maybe y'all been looking in the wrong place. 
because I ain't see that mandingos everywhere. Everywhere you go, single brothers everywhere in Africa. Uh, but, but the thing I want to get to was uh, I saw beautiful women everywhere. Attraction is something you can't control. I'm saying the impulse that it happens, but you can control your response. So don't tell me who you attracted to that determines your destiny. You may be a man attracted to men, a woman attracted to women. You may be heterosexual, homosexual, it doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that the power of Christ does not still work. We're still responsible to manage our attractions. I'm married, I got a ring on. I had women coming up throwing, they sang a song for me, Lord Jesus. When I told Lady Maxwell that, she said, get your behind home. I said, I came out to church and these women were, and I put it on Facebook, they were cleaning the outside of the church and they were calling me the son of Toko. Uh, that, that's the name they gave me, the, the, the Tokish church. And the son of Toko, so they start singing this song. I'm walking and all these women who were cleaning are walking, running toward me. And the security took me, left all the other 11 people and took me to the truck. And while I'm in the truck, I'm taping their song. Talk about the big head. I can't get back into the door. But if you don't have management in the spirit, you will fall for that foolishness. If you are stupid enough to fall for people attracted to you, even though you may have attraction, it does not mean you got to fulfill it. Christ demands more from me and you. And when you have the persona of Jesus, you take a choice to live for him no matter what. It ain't easy. It ain't perfect. But it's a choice. And sometimes I got to choose this day who I'm going to serve. Whether I'm going to choose God or I'm going to serve man. Am I going to live for him or I'm going to live for people? Do I want the best of God or do I want the best of man? I choose Christ. Is there anybody here choose Jesus? Come on, stand to your feet. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus who was crucified for my sins. I choose Jesus who died and rose on the third day with all power in his hand. I choose Jesus who's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. I choose Jesus with a kingdom persona and a kingdom purpose. I choose Jesus to live for him and to die for him. That's the way I want to go out. In my father's business, doing my father's will. That's the way I want to go out. Serving him with my whole body, mind, and soul. Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You know the battles we are battling and waging. They are so real. We are in warfare every day. But God, I'm so glad you've got it all in your hands. There's nothing lacking in you. Thank you, God, for saving all of us, for cleansing us and giving us a new life. Forgive us for doing church as usual. Help us to understand you are putting things in us, not just for each friendship. You are putting and developing gifts and anointings that we may influence the world beyond the church, that we may be able to change minds of governments, that we may be able to give new direction. This is the church's greatest time. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. But you did so much with 12 disciples. You got the gospel around the world. And so, God, we give you permission to do even greater with each friendship. Grow us up to another level, God. Take us deeper in you. Help us stop the hurting one another with our words and our gossip and our backbiting and our talking each other down. Let what we say with our tongue be edifying. Help us, God, to speak edifying words about and to one another. Help us to pray for one another, to minister to one another, and reach out to a dying world. Thank you, Lord, for an experience that changed my life forever. I'm so glad I'll never be the same. 
but I look forward to you, God, introducing me to me, the me that you are shaping, the me that you have in your hands, the me that is in you. The text said, in Christ, we are your possession. We belong to you, not ourselves. Bless our church. Bless our family. In the matchless name of Jesus, let everybody put your hands together and bless them. Hallelujah. Is there one here? You've been on your own travels. You've been traveling a road. Your road don't have to be long. It can be from east, northeast, to southeast, to northwest, to Capitol Heights. But we all are on roads every day. The question is, does those roads lead you to the kingdom citizenship, to the throne room of God? Do you have an intimate, personal relationship with him? We all need forgiveness. We need a second chance. I'm glad God gives second chances to us. He does not leave us in the same place. But you must be redeemed. The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, rose on the third day with all power in his hands, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and me. If you want to come now and give your life to him, the door of the church is now open. One door. Enter into the door of the church and he brings you to the kingdom. Ye must be born again. If you're here, you've never been born again, this is your moment right here. But maybe you have been twice born, blood washed, redeemed, but you're falling back, you backslid. The Bible says he's married to the backslider. That means he'll never give up on you, so don't give up on yourself. The door of the church is open. You may come, you need a church home, you need an opportunity to come, you need the door. As we sing this quick song, we invite you to come down the aisle, give your hand to this pastor and your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come as this time, come, come. Is there one, is there one? You want a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. You want a church home to grow in, to be disciples. You want to be able to fulfill and use all of your gifts that you have to be able to change not just your family, not just your neighborhood, but be a world changer for Christ. 